In today's video, we are going to talk about how to use Microsoft Access for beginners. Myself, Muhammad Zubair, and this channel is all about showing you how to become a highly paid IT pro really fast. So without any further ado, let's get started. Microsoft Access is an information management tool that helps you store information for analysis, reference, and reporting. Basically, it is a relational database program and it is a part of Microsoft Office family. Microsoft Access is an ideal solution for small businesses and companies. And when we talk about big databases, we have other options like MySQL, Oracle, MongoDB, etc. So when you have a large databases, you should consider these. And most importantly, Microsoft Access is a great tool to learn the databases. So let's dig deep into Microsoft Access and let's see how it works, how you can create your databases, how you can create your different forms and how you can generate reports. So first of all, I'll open my Microsoft Access. I will just search for access into my system and here it is. Just open this one and you will have a default look. So this is the interface of Microsoft Access and we are under the home directory. Here you have different templates that you can use. For example, if you are a student and you have some data related to your students, you can use this template. It will save you a lot of time while designing your database. Then you have a lot of other templates. If you click on this more template button, here you have a lot of them. And in case if you know about some template, you just need to write its name here and it will appear on its own. So as you can see, we have a lot of templates. Now I'll go back in here. I have some databases that I have already created earlier. And in case if you want to pin any one of them, just click on this icon and this will be converted into pinned database. So just go to your pinned directory and here we have the pinned database that we created earlier. Now from here you have two choices. Either you can create a new database or you can open an existing one. But I'll create a new one because I'll show you everything from scratch that how you can create your access database. So for that purpose, in terms of template, I'll go with blank database. Just click on it. From here, you have to name your database. I will name this database as skills build. And down here, we have the directory where this database will be stored. In case if you want to change this directory, you can do so from this icon. I'll just click on it and I will save my this database onto my desktop. After that, just click on OK and from here just click on create so this is the default interface that we get after we are done creating our database now here we have a table as you can see on your screen well microsoft access and microsoft excel work on almost same phenomena in microsoft excel we have columns and we have rows but in microsoft access we call our columns as field and we call our rows as records. Now I'll show you that how you can add different values into your database. The first column or first field is ID. This is the default one. Well, in case if you want to change this one, just double click on it and you can name it anything. In my case, I'm going to create a database for my employees. And for that, I will create two tables. In one table, I will have all the information about my employees and in my second table that I will create after this one, I will have the information about their salary, their bonuses and their reduction if there is any and some other information. So first of all, I should have the employee ID. So that is why I will name this field as employee ID. And down here we have its data type. It means what kind of value will get stored in this one. At the moment, if you see the data type is auto number, it means this value will be generated and will be assigned to employee ID on its own. Now let's add another field. 
here i want to have first name for my employee but before that we have to set its data type i'll go with short text short text mean we can have up to 256 character in this field in case if you want to add some more text which is greater than 256 character for that you have to choose different data type i will give a name to my field here as i'm going to use this field as a first name so i will name it as f name make sure you do not use the keywords if i name it as only name then it will give me an error as it says name is keyword we cannot keep it so what i will do i will click on ok and i will double click on it and i will name it as f name and now if i hit enter we have successfully given the name to this field after that we have third field i'll keep the same data type and i will name it as last name then i want to have its email address and for that i will have short text as a data type or you can also go with hyperlink it means if you click on its email address it will open the email browser for you and you can send the email directly but i want to go with short text and i will name this field as email after that i want to have address for that i will again use the short text and i will name it as address then i want to have my city for that i will again use short text and i will name it as city and at last i want to have phone number for that i will go with number as a data type and i will name it as phone number now it's time to add some values in each field as this is the employee id it will take the value on its own after that just hit tab now we'll write first name in here i will name it as zubair and as i have started writing something here one appeared on its own as i have mentioned that this value will be given on its own by the database in terms of last name i will name it as aslam then for my email i will write here zubair at skillsbuild.com then for my address i will write the address here and then i will have my city then i will have my phone number and so on i'll get back to you after i am done entering three to four records and then we'll move ahead i am done creating my first table and i have added some random data in it you can have your data in it as per your liking so we are done with the personal information of every employee now i want to have my second table and in my second table i will have the information about their salary to create a new table just click on this create from the ribbon and after that here we have an option that says table just click on it here we have a new table with the name of table 2 so again i will have id then we will have our other fields now i want to have a relation between these two table i want same employees here and same employees here it means i should have the data of employee id 1 in this table for example i want to know about the salary status of my first employee and it should have the personal information from this table with id 1 so let's have a relation and let's see how we can create one so first of all we'll need to give id to this field i will give this field as an id of number then i will name it as employee id after that you have your other fields in that field i will have my number the name of that field will be basic underscore salary then for my next field i will again have a data type of number and in terms of its name i will name it as bonus then for the next field again i will pick number and i will name it as deduction and for my next field i will take a data type of yes and no it means the status whether it is paid or not i will name it as status and for the last field i will name it as net value it means how much its basic salary was plus his bonuses and if there was any deduction and then at the end i want to have net value so for that i'll click on it and in terms of its data type i'll go down and here we have calculate field from here i'll go to my numbers 
and from here select those field that you want to calculate first of all i want to have basic salary after that i want to add my basic salary into the bonuses and then i want to detect the deductions i will add the minus sign in here and i will double click on my deduction and i'll click on ok now i will name it as net salary so we are good to go and now it's time to add some of the data in our this table so for our id it will be taken on its own for employee id i will name it as one for basic salary let's say it is 2200 dollar in terms of bonus let's say 100 and in terms of reduction let's say we have 15 dollars of reduction in terms of status let's say we did not have paid this one so that is why we will leave it as it is here we have the net salary so if we add 2200 plus 100 we have 2300 and if we detect 15 from it we will leave with 2285 dollars how cool it is that we are already doing our calculations in our table already now i will add some more data but make sure you have same number of records here as your first table here we have three records that is why I'll have three records here. So I'll see you after I'm done adding two more records. I'm done adding the records here. Now, if I close my table, it will ask me to save this table first. So just click on yes and name this table. I will name this as salary underscore info. Click on OK. Now we will close our first table as well. Again, it will ask us to save the information. So just click on yes and name it anything. I will name it as personal underscore info. Just click on OK. So we are done with creating our two tables and we have also seen that what type of data types we can have and how we can add different values in it. One more thing that I want to discuss in here. So let me open my personal information table. And if you see at the bottom right corner, we have our design view. Just click on it. Here you see we have more detailed view in list form so here we have employee id its data type is auto number then we have first name last name email address city phone number and in case if you want to add more information about particular field you can have your description in here you can write anything in here and you can have more detailed information about each one then we have some of the information down here let me click on any of the fields let's say i'm clicking on city and here we have some of the functions that we can apply on each field for example here we have default value i will add the default value here as new york and now if i hit enter it means every employee will have city as new york let's say i have a company and in my company every employee belongs to new york so for that purpose i can have a default value of city as new york so whenever I will enter new record, I will not have to add the city on my own because my table will take the city by default, which is New York. Now let's go back to our data sheet view and click on yes. And here, if I click on any new record, it will take New York as a default value. Here you see it is taking New York by default on its own. So let's say for the first name, I will name it as David. For last name, I will name it as Warner. Email would be david at the rate of skillsbuild.com. For my address, I will enter the random address here. Then here you see it has taken the city on its own and for the next record as well. So this is how you can have your default value. Let's have a phone number. I will give it a random phone number. And then we should also have add one more record in our salary info because these two tables are linked with each other. I will press Ctrl S, I will close this one, I'll go to my salary info and in here I will have one more record. So in here the ID will be 4. For salary, let's say he is earning $2400. For bonus, he has earned about $150 this month and in terms of reduction there was none and we are left with net salary. So we are good to go, we will save this one and now I will close this one and we are done with creating our table and adding different data into it. Now it's time to create the relationship between both table. We have seen that we have employee ID in both table because we want to create a relationship between these two. To create a relationship between these two tables, go to your database tool section and in here we have relationships. Just click on it. 
and on the right side of the screen we have all the information about the table that are existing at the moment we have personal info and then we have salary info so i will just drag it and i will drag my salary info as well let me resize these two table so that we can have better view and we can understand everything more sophisticatedly so here we have employee id and here we also have the employee id as i have mentioned earlier that i want to have the personal information of every employee that i am going to pay so that is why i will just drag this employee id and i will drop it on this employee id and here it says employee id employee id and it is basically asking if both are same yes these both are same so i'll just click on create and here you see we have a relationship created and these two tables are linked with each other and here you also see a key icon it means this is a primary key primary key means such field that is unique in the whole table and it cannot be repeated for example if i open my personal information table all my employees have a different id yes my two employees can have same name they also can have same address they also can have same city but only thing that is unique is employee id that is why this is my primary key and same goes my salary information table id is unique and here as i have my employee id in here that is why i have used this one as a foreign key into my salary information now the primary key and foreign key made the relationship between these two table and now we will have the synchronized information from both these before we move ahead i just want to tell you that how you can import your external data let's say i have some data which is existing externally and i want to import that one into my microsoft access for that purpose go to your external data section and here it says new data source just click on it so from here you can add different type of data for example from file you have html document xml file text file or excel or let's say you have a database external and it can be from access sql azure and dbase file and you have some other resources from where you can import database into your microsoft access so i'll show you that how you can access from your excel sheet i will just click on it from here click on browse so from here i'll go to my desktop here i have some data so i will just double click on any one of these and just click on okay so here we will have the information about the data we are going to import so this is my table and here i have some fields and i have some value this is not the same data as we are creating here but i just wanted to show you that how you can import one from here have your field names their data types and other things click on next and from here set your primary key click on next and just click on finish a database will get imported into our access and here it says your data source contains more than 255 fields access will import only first 225 fields click on okay and click on close and here we have our data that we have just imported this is how you can access and you can import your external databases let's say you want to add information into your tables but you do not want to use these table from your database you want some other way that is more feasible and that is more easier we have a way that called form with the help of form you can enter the data into your form and from your forms those data that you will enter will be added into your tables on their own and that is more feasible and that is more accessible for everyone i'll show you how you can do that for that purpose click on create and here you have some options in terms of the form we have blank form form design and form i'll just click on form here before clicking on your form make sure to select your table for which you want to create a form and as i have selected my personal info table that is why it has taken the ids on its own and there is one more benefit it will take the data types on its own from this table if you remember the last name have short text email has short text address has short text data type and this form will take all those data types on its own and one more very interesting thing in here is as we know that we have a relationship with personal info and salary info that is why we will have all those related information in here if i click on my next here which is this one 
it will keep on changing in here as well for my kevin i have a basic salary of 2100 and if i go to my tables this is my personal info kevin has the employee id as 2 and in my salary info the employee with the id 2 should have 2100 dollar basic salary and now if i go into my personal info form here we have the same scenario so just keep clicking on this next record button and you will have the synchronized information from both table so let's close this personal info form so i will just click on this cross button and it will ask us to save these changes i will name it as personal info underscore form hit enter and here we have a new category with the name of forms so just double click on it anytime and it will open everything in front of you now let's move ahead and let's see how we can create different queries and how we can extract specific data for example let's say my hr department wants to know first name last name address email id of a person to whom the accounts department going to send its salary so for that purpose we can use different queries so i'll show you that how you can create one so for that just go to your create section and in here we have option that says query wizard query design just click on it and it will open some fields in front of you from here click on your table i will resize it click on other table and i will resize it as well so basically in this section it will show you all those table that you have into your database so now i want to have my first name then i want to have last name address of particular employee his phone number and from my salary info i want to have its basic salary his bonuses if there are any deduction status status mean whether it is paid or not and then at the end i want to see his net salary as well so we are good to go and we have created our query successfully down here we have a criteria i want to see only those records in which salary is not paid yet for that purpose i will write here equals no as we know that we only have two type of status yes or no that is why i'm going with equal no so i will only have the records of those employees whose salaries are not paid so we are done here with our status and with our criteria and you might be wondering that why all these values are checked in here well it is up to you if you want to see this value into the result or not for example here i have my net salary and obviously it is getting in here after calculation of these three fields so either you can choose to see these fields into the output or you can also decide to hide these fields but result will be coming from these fields i also want to show these fields into my result that is why i will keep every box ticked in here now let's see how it will look like click on this button that says data sheet view and here it is and here how it will look like first name of each employee last name of each employee address phone number basic salary bonus deduction status and net salary as in our criteria we went with equal to no so as we have not paid salary of any employee that is why we are seeing the result of each and every employee let's go back and in here let's write here yes and now if i go to my data sheet view i will not have any record because i do not have any record of any employee whose salary has been paid that is why it is blank here i'll go back and i will change back it to no and we are good to go before we move ahead i also want to show you that how you can have sql query by this way we have extracted the information using the graphical user interface but what if you want to go through sql for that click on this sql label and here we have the query it says select personal info dot f name mean get the first name from personal info the last name from personal info then address from personal info and up to so on and here it says basic salary from salary info bonus salary from salary info and then same goes ahead for rest of the fields and down here we have our criteria as it says where salary underscore info its status is equal to no now it means it will show all those records with salary not paid so this is how you can have your sql queries into your 
access database. So we are done with having our forms. We have also seen that how we can create our different queries. Let me save this one. I will name it as query info. After that, just hit enter. And here we have another category with the name of queries. Now at the end, I'll talk about one more phenomena and that is report. Let's say the HRM department or upper management want to see the status of salaries of each employee and they want to have some other information as well. So for that purpose, we can create different reports. I'll show you that how you can create one. So first of all, select the table, query or form of which you want to create a report. Let's say I want to create a report of my queries. So I'll just click on my query. After that, I'll go to my create and from here, I'll click on report. Here it is. We have three options in here, report, report design, blank report. Report will take the design which is by default and in blank report, you can create your own design. I'll go with the report and also show that how the blank report will look like. So this is how my report is looking at the moment. And in here, I have all the information about the queries that I had earlier. First name, last name, address, phone number, salary information and at the end we have net salary with the status if it is being paid or not but as we know that in our criteria we went with those records that are not being paid that is why we are having all the records here now in case if you want to go with blank report you can go as well but before that i will save this database press ctrl s and name it anything i will name it as query report hit enter and here we have a new category with the name of reports now let's see how we can create a blank report just click on this icon and from here you can design your own report here it says show all tables. obviously we want to have all those tables from here you can add different controls like you have your buttons you can add your links you can add different pictures in here then you have your color selection then here we have different themes and these settings are not only applicable to your reports, but you can apply all these settings onto your forms as well. Here we have the same option. We can add different colors, different themes, different controls onto our form. Then we have our query information and we can do the same. And before we end this video, I want to show you that how you can save this database. Click on file, click on save as, double click on access database and it will open directory for you. So from here, go to any directory where you want to save this database. I want to save it in this directory. Click on save and you are good to go. And with that, we are done with everything that is necessary to know about how to use Microsoft Access database for beginners. If that is the case, please leave a like, subscribe and press the bell icon. We'll see you in the next video. Till then, take care.